Who is that mysterious masked man? Who is the shadowy figure behind Mr. X? Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey everybody, it's George the Antique Nomad, and I'm here at Antique Galleries of St. Petersburg, a former 1960s bank building that has been converted into two floors of antique shopping. If you're heading down Highway 19, this is at the corner of 4th Avenue North and 34th Street. You'll hear a combination of birds and road noise, because the one thing I like about this store is it was a bank and it has a big iron gate so it's all around the perimeter is this porch and they put all these really cool things out here that would go outdoors and a lot of antique and vintage stores don't have room to do this sort of stuff so you'll find interesting things like the cherubs at a hundred and a quarter and this number 12 croc is a big red wing it's nice for the dealers because it means that some big things that might not fit in their space can come out here traffic calming. <laughs> All you can hear is road noise. I think they need to put that sign out on the street. There are some nice patio furniture pieces out here as well. I always like these iron items with the grape arbors and the interwoven iron design from the 1960s vintage. The little buggy there, that'd be cute for your doll or for your plants. And then there's several porch sets here, patio sets. There's some are Salterini, some are other designers. Salterini is going to sell for a lot more than the non-designer ones. You might see five to seven hundred on a Salterini set that might be two hundred if it was someone else, but uh, there's good references you can find to tell who the big designers were for those things. And then this is Edward Woodard, the fiberglass. Now, I'm not usually a big proponent of painting, but fiberglass often needs paint especially in salt air and this was painted black and I love it in black they were made in white originally so I think this is really sharp and high contrast and just a great way to repurpose the 70s piece of furniture if you need to repaint well you might as well paint whatever color you like because fiberglass needs paint occasionally anyway and you can always paint it back I always like these 60s chaise lounges, but they do take an odd shaped long single unit pillow that folds in the middle, so it's not the easiest thing to recreate on your own. $80 for the vintage trike. I got about 60 for the last one I sold. Concrete bird baths. I guess that's why we hear birds chirping. They're probably making nests and wondering why there's no water in these. Sit. Good dog. And there's the sign so you can find it if you're driving through town. These are painted over bronze by Gaudez. And so you have all of this sculptural work. And that is why they are priced at about $1,300, but aren't they beautiful? This store has really nice things. When it calls itself an antique gallery, gallery is a fair name because there's some really beautiful stuff in here that we're going to see as we go through. Well, it's April, so it's almost Earth Day, and this is a really cool thing because it is from the first Earth Day. This is a Robert Rauschenberg poster, and he did this collage art for the first Earth Day in 1970. It's really great. It's hand-signed. It came from a very important collection. I'll just let you read the tag. It can tell you more than I can, but it's a great piece. So in the 60s and 70s, these big battery-operated Japanese toys were very popular, and they're very popular with collectors now as well. 
And you want to look for the Made in Japan label. This one's got the box, so you can see Made in Japan right on it in the corner. And that's great, because the Chinese reproductions don't sell for anything like the Japanese ones do. It blows smoke, too. Now, a really serious train collector is likely to be interested in Lionel's. And this appears to be pre-war because of the little brass plate with Lionel on it. This is long before they switched over to plastic cars, which was sometime in the late 50s, early 60s. And there's the passenger car. They're in flawless condition. That makes such a difference. My sister used to refer to me as Scrooge McDuck, and they're all laughing at Scrooge. Hmm. Early Disney TV tray. Now here is a real Coca-Cola button. I like showing these to people because there's new ones made of metal, but it's a lot thinner. This is original with the enameling. You can tell because it's pretty rashed. I'm going to show you what this is first, and then you're going to be wowed, I think. Because look at that. What a great design. This is Knut Hesterberg, and he was a German sculptor. You'll see sculptures of his all over Germany and places in Italy as well. He started working in a design studio in Zurich, and then he met an architect named Max Bill who really influenced him, and he started doing sculptural and architectural pieces. And these tables are part of his legacy. Mid-century people have caught onto these years ago, and so it's unusual to find one for sale anywhere in an antique mall. This is just a really neat thing to see in person. Well, I would love to tell you about this piece of colony glass, which was the first thing Wayne Husted did after he worked for Blanco. It came in various colors, and the jars and everything were very strange and interesting shapes, but I know you're not really paying attention to that. You're looking at the cute puppies. Very typical of 1980s limited edition art. Sort of a combination of watercolor and almost a pen and ink or drawn aspect to it by an artist named Griff. Several artists in that time did this sort of work. And yes, they're darling. I always like these ABC plates. They came out first in Victorian times, and I suspect that the theory was if you can't get them to eat, you can at least get them to learn. But if you read the tag there, the reason this one's $75 isn't just because it's old, but because it's Robinson Crusoe and Friday. And that makes it more interesting. Anything that refers to children's literature is a big hit with collectors. Wow, that guy is going to crunch your peanuts. This, this uh, may be okay. Italian or German. Henri did a lot of these sorts okay. of figures, but I would say this one is probably more likely German because of the style of the carving in the guy's face. It's cool. I like that he's holding a bottle of grog too, so beer and peanuts. Light is crazy. Check it out. Oh, it's just crazy. Yeah, it is. It's beautiful. Wicker is something we see come out in spring, and this is a very handsome desk. And with desk being so popular right now, and the price is only $165, I don't think this thing's going to last long at all. I have to say, if I had it in my shop, I'd probably have it $35 to $50 higher at least, just because of demand. That was a member of the Black Society. And we never got rid of them. No, that was a member. He got the Jefferson Airplane album. Everyone is caught on to the primary color mixing bowl sets on the right. Those are Pyrex from the 1960s. 
But I like the ones from the early 80s with the clear bottoms too. I think they're coming next. This dealer is a modernist dealer and they keep it simple and straightforward so you can really see everything because a lot of modernists do decorate in a more elemental manner with a few choice objects rather than tons. That shelf is only $125. I think that's a great deal for display. They keep their gallery wall on the other side, including this wonderful kitty who's telling us the truth. Nothing is impossible. Although I had two cats, one of them learned how to do this right away on the toilet and the other one, well, it was impossible. Not all cats are smart. These are very smart though. Love the shape and design of these chrome lamps and especially having that bottom light makes them different. And then the tile table is neat too. I just love everything in here. We would call these a compote in the United States. In Italy, they refer to them as taza, T-A-Z-Z-A. -Z -Z -A. I don't know how they balance those glass things on their noses like that. And this gallery is full of beautifully carved, truly antique figural wood pieces like this from that part of the world as well. We've shown Petra Dura before in small forms like jewelry and little tiles and things. Yes, believe it or not, some of these heavy carved inlaid stoneworks have been used on furniture as tabletops. Isn't it stupendous? It's just beautiful. This work has been done in both Italy and India. We had a big round table at an estate sale that we sold in Seattle that was Petra Dura very similar in pattern to this from India in that case and oh it took four people just to lift the top off to move it but it's stunning and they are just magnificent so while I'm thinking of it please comment in the space below here and also hit the thumbs up button to like this video if you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button below. Also, hit the bell below to be notified of new videos coming every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And thank you so much for following along. Let's go back to this video. And really, this entire gallery is magnificent. If this is your style, you are going to find it in spades here in this space because most of these pieces were brought over from Europe, primarily from Italy. I believe this dealer filled a couple of containers full in order to bring these to us here. There's true antique and there's just some stunning pieces like this beautifully hand-painted cabinet here. Now I have to say, so far I haven't seen a price under about 1500 or 2000 on the furniture, but St. Petersburg has a lot of beautiful waterfront places and a lot of them were done in an old Spanish or Mediterranean style and so this furniture really suits the area here. And people here are not afraid of color either. Look at this beautiful cabinet. This came from Venice and it's not surprising because the glass blowers in Venice did very well early on and so they had money to buy and have made very beautiful furniture but we're really trying to get to the corner to show you this this is a bombay style with the blown out sides and it is a china cabinet and secretary desk it is really something special there is unlikely to be another one with this exact style of painting on it anywhere the tapestry is also quite splendid, Italian again. It's going to price somewhere in the $1,500 to $2,000 range, and you can blame William Randolph Hearst for that because he loved tapestries. At Hearst Castle, if you ever take the tour, take the one that takes you in the Grand Dining Hall, and you'll see about 30 of these much larger hanging from the rafters. It got a whole lot of people interested in collecting them. 
the color is still really strong in those roses. And that's important because, you know, these could fade, they could be eaten by bugs. So finding good ones in good shape, not so easy. We'll pull back a little here so you can see the puto. Puti is plural for the Italian cupids. Now, the cupid started out as being an erotic symbol in Roman and Greek times and was largely forgotten in the medieval period. But in the Renaissance, Donatello and others came up with the notion of using the toddler boy with the wings as a musician angel and gave it a Baroque-inspired Christian influence. And so then all of a sudden, little naked winged boys were considered a religious symbol. There's also a gallery wall in this space, and most of these are artists from Europe, and they are people who are known but are minor listed artists, which is nice because you get a really nice style and lots of color and some great scenes that match this furniture and this Mediterranean vibe but are not going to cost you a fortune. This one's Arbellini, for example. He is listed. He's on Ask Art, but nobody really has a lot of biographical information. We're not even sure if he's still working or still alive. So you might get a sleeper if you buy what you like in the long run, you may be pleasantly surprised. When my father was stationed in Naples in the 1950s when he was in the Navy, he discovered the workmanship of Napoleon furniture crafters who did these fruitwood inlays. Well, this is something that has been done in Italy for centuries. You see the fasces there, obviously an Italian symbol as well. Look how well done the marquetry on this piece is. And if you look really closely at the way the drawers are assembled, you'll note that this particular piece has very even square dovetailing. So that was done by a machine as opposed to being completely hand done. But it's still a really nice piece and machining comes into furniture earlier than you think. Actually as early as the mid to late 1800s we start having machines involved with furniture making. This particular piece I find very attractive personally. We still have one of the pieces that my father brought back from Italy in our orbit, which is nice. You can see by the way the hardware is done here that this is a late 19th century or early 20th century piece. And I like the faux graining on the top. I find that interesting to look like marble. Who is that mysterious masked man? Who is the shadowy figure behind Mr. X? We are about to see the reveal, because I forgot to wear my cape. Whoops. After World War II, a painter named Yasha Brojo started hand-painting metal trays to sell for extra money, and his friend said, well, don't sully your artwork. Pick a different name for the commercial stuff. Little did they know that they were starting a big trend. There's a good book called Design and Signed that talks about the beginning of designer labels in American manufacturing, which really is something we see starting in the 1950s. This piece probably dates to about 1970. It was done on a Pyrex blank and then they would do the decoration and sell it under their own brand name. We know that people are just in love with Blendo glass now, and it's great stuff. It has to be taken care of well. You can't put it in the dishwasher over and over or you'll wash the color away. And so that's why these pieces are desirable because the colors are very strong. And these are a little more unusual. You do not see the parfait stems very often. You see more of these tumblers and this sort of wear. This gallery looks like a place someone lives. 
It's very sweet. It's nice to see some vintage drapery that's not an easy thing to find because they go bad, they get sun faded, they rot. You'll see some reproduction upholstery here too. I don't remember a single house I grew up in that didn't have one of these two-tiered corner tables where a couch was on one side and a love seat at a right angle on the other. And they sell still in the $100 and less range sometimes. It's a fun modernist piece that gives you a lot of display space. And here's the Royal Aristocrat. I just got one of these for $25 and felt very fortunate. They're selling between $75 and $100 nowadays. This space is everything 70s. The Partridge family, the game set, and this wall oven and range top. These were very popular in Florida in the 60s and 70s, and look how clean this one is. I always thought they were a great idea because it never made sense to me that you're bending over to take a big, heavy, seething, hot thing out of a very hot oven and you have to bend over and pick it up as well. It just makes more sense to me that you would want to take it out at the arm level. If I ever really cooked anything, I'd have to get this because it's priced under $500. Think how much it would be if it was new. In the 70s, CB radio was a big fad, and this is a Johnson Messenger 130, so you can actually use it as a phone-style receiver instead of having to have a separate speaker, and it does all the CB functions. These sell for about $100 now, so when you go to estate sales and see old CBs, don't think they're just old junk. This space is done in a formal yet fun manner. Everything is very balanced, and yet you have a mix of mid-century and neoclassical prints, this very fun Blackamoor style lamp. But I wanted to show this because this is a really interesting way to use boxes. People are buying boxes and crates to use for things other than just being boxes and crates. This has been put on a stand. It's an old peach box from the Carolinas from the land of sunshine, probably from about 1910 or 20. And what's great about it is that our lid was made for it. It's been turned into a functional item, a nice little table. So you've got some storage and you have that neat old graphic. This is a great way for primitive or country decorators to have something that's really vintage rather than just some new thing that has words painted on it. This is from the Big Easy. We see a lot of really fun animated art like this edition prints, paintings on slate, all done in the 1970s for the most part. And these typically sell for about $100 each, almost regardless of who the artist is. They're just having so much fun. Well, it's been really fun introducing you to yet another great antique mall in St. Petersburg, and there are more. It's just such an antique destination, so we will be back from this location. We've got a whole bank of showcases that we didn't show you, and there's another level as well. So join us for our next videos, and you'll get to see even more. In the meantime, I'm George the Antique Nomad on the social media you see listed here. If you are not a subscriber, please subscribe because then you can click that bell and that way you'll be notified of future videos. We also have a membership program. You can hit the join button or the link in the description to find out more about that. Please leave a comment. We like to hear from you and click that thumbs up button to like this video. Take care now and we'll see you later. Bye bye. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!